And then, you know, there's the, where else? There's the, this is the new world, you know, and the other part of the new world is, is America. People think that's got a lot of promise. Still, even though we're all a bit funny about Americans now, a bit. I think the reason that happened, all that bad feeling about America, is apart from everything that they've done, <laughs> it's because American stupid people sound stupider than every other kind of stupid person. <laughs> Some people are just thick, but you put up with them. But Americans are annoying when they're thick, because they say, well, you know, I was, if they're talking about one of those terrible incidents that happen every other day in America, they say, well, you know, I was there, and the guy came in, and he had, like, a gun, you know, and he was, like, shooting, and everybody else was totally dead. And you just... It sounds a little divorced from reality somehow. So I think that's why there's this ill feeling about the place sometimes, because of everything the administration has done. You know, it's like the really bad flatmate of the world. Oh, sorry, did I break all your shit? I didn't know it was yours. <laughs> yeah, I'll replace it sometime. Um, with my stuff. And... Because it's the only remaining empire. Of course, you had an empire once. Britain had a great empire. And impressively commandeered and sequestered from the rest of the world. Great style. You just marched in and said, you, you and you, fuck off, we're having tiffin. <laughs> and everybody sort of went, oh, right, I'm going to be off now, that's fine. And it took centuries for people to go, hang on a minute. We live here. <laughs> the American style is totally different, far more insidious. This empire is run on a totally different basis. What America does is it has a nosy in some place, some war-torn, fucked-up place, and that looks for oil or chocolate or whatever it wants. <laughs> and all the indigenous people obviously get pissed off, and they begin to meet, they begin to foment. They ring each other up and say, you, Habuwa, let's meet and foment at six o'clock. In the local bombed out cafe, they gather round and they say, what are we go I'm good doing a pan global accent, okay? <laughs> it saves time, because America gets around a lot of places. What are we, what and this represents poverty. What <laughs> hey, listen. Hi. Haguga, listen. What are we going to do about the fucking imperialistic Yankee big dog, huh? What are we going to do? They come in here, they fucking, they look around, they take our stuff. What are we going to do? I'm talking to you. Put down the beans. Listen, what are we going to do? It's kind of Al Pacino from China via Brooklyn. But the, um... And then what America does, while these people are talking, it very, very gradually builds a Starbucks around them. And then they all become addicted to latte and they lose the will to rebel. And then they turn into Americans. <laughs> After a couple of weeks, the kind of people who come up to me and say, Hi, I, I'm Irish. My grandmother was no flirty, did you know her? I always say, yes, yes I do. But then again, everybody did. <laughs> now that's a particular kind of American, obviously, the kind of Americans you see in Europe, who often, for some reason, seem to be very generously proportioned. And the, you see them in museums, blocking up the exhibits, going, what is this, can we eat it? Where are we? Can we pee now? <laughs> and yet, when you go to America, you see that it's a, a very, very, uh, because it's so competitive and everything, people are ultra-fashionable and very thin, really. I think the Americans you see in Europe are all the ones who stay in their apartments, get food piped in, and then they're just shipped out to, to Europe. And, <laughs> but the ones over there, you see these amazing-looking people. They don't look real at all, these incredibly exiguous women. You know those people who look like they can't support the weight of their own teeth in their head? <laughs> stalking in and out of fashionable restaurants. I don't know what they do in there. Maybe they just rub pesto on their legs or something. And <laughs> you know, they look like they weigh as much as a photograph of themselves. And, and <laughs> very fashion conscious. But people have this idea that it's, that it's still the, the promised land. You know, somewhere like California, which everything is fruitful and, and, and abundant. But Arnold Schwarzenegger is, is the governor of California. There's a perfectly ordinary English sentence. <laughs> How did that happen?
happen? Do you know how that happened? Because I'll tell you. You know how we got into that position? He got there by lifting things. Now you and me, we avoid lifting things. It's unpleasant. Especially heavy things. Even a five-year-old child knows this. They go, huh? No, <laughs> fuck it, no. I'm going to put Lego up my ass. I'm not doing that. No, no, no. <laughs> he took a different approach. He lifted the heavy. And you know, you lift something when you have to. Piano falls on Granny. You lift the piano. Because Granny has mixed feelings about the whole situation. <laughs> Sunday lunch continues. <laughs> he didn't do any of that. He went right over to the heavy thing and lifted it. I put it back down and didn't move it anywhere. And then he lifted it again, hundreds of times, and said to the people who had stopped to observe this aberrant behavior, look how good I am at lifting the heavy thing in my underpants. Now that sounds a little dim. But it was they who said, you're the man. You're the one we want to deal with immigration and water rates and taxes and all that kind of shit. <laughs> now, wait. What we need to know is, how bad was his predecessor at that job? You know, this must have been somebody who came to work covered in children's blood every morning. 